Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Alex and in today's video, I'm going to show you how to set up the software FX backtesting software. Backtesting has been a very important aspect of my day-to-day -day activity and to be honest with you if I would have not started backtesting a long time ago I would have not been able to discover my strategy to build it to bring improvements to the strategy so for those of you who are still looking for success <laughs> for those of you who have still not found uh, your edge in trading I believe that if you will start backtesting, build yourself a set of rules and start backtesting it so that you can build trust in that set of rules in that system. And that, um, you know, after each uh, backtesting session, you're going to see that your understanding in the system that you're um, uh, utilizing and uh, your trust in the system that you're utilizing is going to greatly improve and increase. Okay, so without further ado, let's see exactly how I set up the software FX backtesting software. First of all, you need to open a trading pair. As usual, I'm going to choose gold and then we need to go here in our uh, MT4 platform. So just to, uh, to clarify, software FX is a uh, backtesting software that allows us to backtest in uh, MT4. We're going to pick it up from here, uh, drag and drop it on the chart and then we need to make sure that we're gonna take this option here allow dll imports which i have no idea what it is but uh you know if i don't uh take that option it just won't work okay so after we have done this we need to go to data center okay so this is the uh first thing that you need to do go to data center and in here you're gonna have to select a data provider you can choose from Ducas Copy and TrueFX. I've um, stick to Ducas Copy uh, from the first moment when I started to backtest and uh, yeah, their uh, price feed is pretty accurate. So then in here you will see a list of uh, symbols of pairs that you can download the um, price action feed for and then just start backtesting it. You can see here that I've already backtested gold and the last time when I've updated this was for the 17th of June, which is about I think less than a week ago. Okay, so what we're going to do here, we're just going to click on update so that all the price feed, including yesterday's price feed, is going to be brought into our platform. Now, if you are going to do this for the first time, you will simply just go to download. And in here, it's uh, uh, you're not going to have this message where it says that you're about to override the existing historical data of gold. Okay, so in here, you're just going to have this um, uh, little window displaying. So uh, it asks you whether you want to download, you know, how many years of tick data do you want to download? Um, in my opinion, I think that one year of uh, tick data is going to be absolutely enough. So after you're going to pick that, uh, it's going to start downloading. You can see that the download speed is pretty fast. Okay, so you're not going to wait a lot for that. So let's just wait for all of this price data to be downloaded. Okay, so now you can see that I've downloaded the price action starting from the 22nd of June 2022 till the 21st of, 1st of June 2023, which is just yesterday. After I've done this, I'll just click on close. And by the way, you can do this with whatever, um, whatever pairs you desire. If you want to download the price action feed for more pairs, you just select them from here. So let's say I would choose GBP, NZD, and NZD JPY. Okay, after I do this, I just click on download all selected. Okay, and in here it's going to ask me how many years of tick data do I want to download for each. Okay, you can also choose to download all available data, but this is going to take a while, so I really don't recommend you to do that. Okay, so just stick to, you know, one year of tick data because that's going to be more than enough for you to backtest your strategy. Okay, so after I've downloaded the uh, price feed for the pair that I need, then I'll click on close and then we need to go to new simulation. In here in the new simulation uh, window, uh, the provider that we are selecting is going to be the same one, Ducas Copy. You're going to have a list of instruments here. Uh, which is going to be populated with the instruments that you've downloaded the price feed for. So because I've only downloaded the price feed for gold, that's why only gold shows in here. So now uh, you need to uh, to set the main settings. So in here, start simulation from, you're going to have to, you know, tell this uh, backtesting software, when is the first date where that 
you're going to have your uh, chart populated with price beats. So let's say that I would like to backtest um, the previous week's price action. OK, you can see in here that you can go all the way back to June 2022. OK, and if you just browse through um, this uh, calendar here, uh, you can pick a more recent price data. OK, so today we're in uh, 22nd of June. Uh, let's say that I want to backtest the previous week of price action. So I'll start from the 12th, okay? And it's going to end the simulation yesterday, which is 22nd of June, which is the last day that we've downloaded uh, price feed for. Account currency, uh, you cannot select here. For example, if you're going to pick NZD JPY, you will only have to select here from NZD and JPY. So if you're going to pick, for example, AUD USD, then you can only select AUD or USD. OK, so in this case, because I've selected gold versus the US dollar, it only allows me to select USD as the account currency and, uh, you know, just pick whatever starting balance you want. Now in here, try to be uh, not necessarily realistic with the starting balance that you're going to use, because I see a lot of people um, trying or starting a backtesting session just to see how much money they're going to make within that back, uh, you know, with that strategy. Guys, backtesting is supposed to bring clarity in uh, and, and, you know, confidence in the system that you're using. OK, it's not supposed to give you a insight on how much money you're going to make if you're going to use a certain strategy. OK, because. That can differ from pair to pair. It can differ from period, uh, from backtesting, um, backtesting period to another backtesting period. So it doesn't really. Um, you should not look at backtesting that way. Okay. So it doesn't matter what starting balance you're going to choose. The focus during your backtesting session should not be on how much money you're going to make, but it should actually be on the process itself, on the thought process of analyzing price action. Uh, when am I entering setups? What is the point of interest that I want a uh, you know certain setup to form at? What's the time of the day when I want to uh, take the setup? How many hours am I going to spend in front of my computer every day? So that's the kind of things that you want to uh, basically build as a habit through backtesting. Also, think about it like this: during a backtesting session, emotions are completely you know missing. Okay, you are backtesting emotion free because you know you're not risking real money. You're uh, not even spending too much time in front of your computer. So not only that you're not investing money that is, uh, you know, possibly uh, at risk, you're either not investing time, too much time that you cannot get back. OK, because I can sit here in front of my computer for one hour and backtest the entire price action of the previous week. OK, so this is another benefit of backtesting. So in here, during backtesting, you're not investing time, you're not investing money or yes, you are investing some time, but you're investing a lot less time than you would um, if you would uh, if you were to demo trade, which in my opinion is is a lot better to backtest than to demo trade, because when you're backtesting, you can go through a lot of um, price data. And it allows you to accumulate more experience a lot faster because now you're not bound to waiting for real time price action to form. Don't think that um, the results that you're going to have in your backtesting sessions are going to entirely reflect on the results that you're going to have during your live uh, trading sessions. You could have fantastic results during your backtesting sessions, and then when you go, in the live markets and want to trade live funds, your results are going to be awful simply because when you trade live money, your emotions are going to kick in, which is something that your emotions are completely missing when when you're backtesting. Or you can even have very bad results during backtesting and you could have better results during your live uh, trading sessions. And the reason for this uh, is because during, uh, you, you know, you could be one of those people that during backtesting sessions, you're not actually taking everything very seriously. So you're not paying attention to, you know, the, the set of rules that you're utilizing or stuff like that, because you're thinking, well, it's uh, not live money. Uh, you know, you're going to say, well, backtesting is just useless for me. Uh, and then you're going to decide to go with live funds. And maybe knowing now that you're trading life funds, you're going to be a little more careful with the setups that you're going to pick. I've seen people that um, have uh, managed to actually uh, become a good trader by 
exposing themselves to the emotions that they would uh, only get if they trade life funds. So it really depends on you. It's really up to you whether you're going to take backtesting seriously or not. Before we continue, I want to take a few seconds and thank Hango Trade for sponsoring this video. And I do want to share with you the reason why I've actually decided to switch to Hango Trade. They have a great variety of accounts, starting with standard accounts, ECN accounts, ECN Plus, and also Islamic accounts. They have a minimum spread. It starts from zero pips. They have a max leverage of 500, smallest commission in the market, $2 per one standard lot. They have a 100% matching bonus promotion. Click the link below in the description. Sign up for an account with Hanko Trade. They have an excellent customer service. Once you deposit at least $100, they are going to match that with a 100% deposit. So now let's continue with the settings here. Time on charts. Uh, you can choose from New York Close or GMT. If you choose New York Close, then it's just going to be your normal uh, broker's hour, okay? The broker that you're actually uh, utilizing the software in. Uh, rewinding allowed, uh, you can take this, you can allow this option um, because, for example, if you want to go again through an entry that you've taken, you can actually rewind the candles that you've already printed and sometimes that can actually prove to be very useful. Okay, then advanced settings. You're going to have here pip size. Pip size, usually it's uh, going to be 10 points per pip. Lot size for gold is 100, so we're trading 100 ounces of gold per one standard lot. Leverage, just pick whatever leverage your broker is going to have. For me, it's 1 to 500, and then we're going to leave spread as fixed, and we're going to put it 10 points, okay? Commission per lot, whether your broker has commission per lot or not, whatever. As I said, these uh, things, these settings do not really matter because they would only affect the end result profit-wise, the end result of our backtesting session. But through backtesting, we're only looking to improve our craft or, you know, some of us really discover our craft. Initial history and charts, and here we're going to, you can put whatever number you want, okay, and so that you can have some uh, price uh, on your chart. And then uh, you can just click on star simulation. After you've clicked on star simulation, maybe you're going to ask yourself, okay, where's the chart? But well, we need to open the charts. So we're going to go here to charts. And in here, we're going to pick standard chart. And you can uh, add as many charts as you want, starting from one minute all the way to the monthly. Okay. And you can also customize time frame in minutes or in hours or in days. So for example, if you want to build a chart, that's going to be like a three minute chart or let's say like a two hour chart or a three day chart. You can definitely do that from here. Okay. I'll only pick like a M1 standard chart and I'll only keep a thousand bars on it. I don't need 10,000 bars on the one minute chart because the one minute is only going to be for my entries. So I'll click on that and I'll add it. You can see that it has been added here on the upper side of this window. Then I will also add a five minute chart and then a 15 minute chart and ultimately a one hour chart. After I've done this, the last thing that I need to do is just open them one by one. So I'll open the one hour, 15 minutes, five minutes and one minute, and then I can click on close. So in here at the bottom of the um, uh, MT4, you can see that I have all these charts. We need to choose the template that we're gonna use on, on uh, these charts. So I'll just, Put the template that I've prepared in here for me, ICT kill zones, and I'll add that template on each of these. So now that I've added that, I'm good to go. The first thing that we want to do, we want to mark the one hour chart. Now you can see here that I've already added some, because my template contains these uh, vertical lines in here. Um, these vertical lines basically represent the 12 midnight open. Okay, so uh, in here, what I want to start with is I want to add weekly dividers to my chart, okay? Because this is the way in which I read market bias. So this last day here that I have on my chart was June 9th, okay? So June 9th, if I'll go here to my calendar, June 9th was a Friday, okay? So if this was a Friday, it means this was Thursday, Wednesday, Tuesday, Monday. So it means that right here, we have Mondays open, okay? So I'll just take a thicker vertical line and put it there. And that's the beginning of my week. And then we'll just count five days to the left side of this vertical thick line. One, two, 
three, four, five. So that's going to be another week of price action. Okay. After I've done this, now I want to add the daily highs and lows and weekly highs and lows, those that have not been broken so far. So this is a weekly high that we have not visited so far. And that's an unbroken weekly structure. And then we also have this one over here. And then we also have the high of that day. So I'm just marking daily highs and lows and weekly highs and lows that price has not visited so far. Okay, so these are the ones that we have not visited so far. And these are going to be the ones that we've already broken through. And I'm just going to use like a, a line that's going to look like this. A shorter line. So that's a daily high that was broken. That's another daily high that was broken. This is another daily high that is broken. It's here. It's uh, Tuesday's high. Tuesday's low is also broken. Okay, so I'm just building my template here on the one hour chart by um, marking those market structures that have not been broken yet. Those that have already been broken. Okay, so now that I've marked my chart with all the market structures, the broken ones, the unbroken ones, now it's time for me to identify what's the market bias so that I can know exactly what am I going to focus on. So we can see here that the most recently broken weekly structure, I actually cannot see it here uh, because we have not broken a weekly low, we have not broken a weekly high. Okay, so because I'm missing some of the price feed, I'll just focus on the daily um, market bias. So at this point, the daily market bias has just shifted bullish because we broke two daily highs in here. And if we're going to break a daily low, then that's going to shift bearish. What I want to do now is I want to start looking at the 15 minutes chart. And you can see here that on the lower time frame, starting with the 15 minutes all the way to the one minute, I've added some rectangles here. That's basically an indicator that shows me the kill zones. Okay, so we have here the London kill zone. Then we have the New York kill zone and then the green shaded area is going to be the Asian session. Because in here we're outside trading hours, what I'll do is I'll just um, bring this in and I'll start printing more candles so that I can actually reach um, that hour when it's okay for me to start looking for setup. You can see that a new vertical line has appeared in here. Okay, so that's basically uh, going to be a new weekly open for me, right? Because that was Friday. So now we just need to put here another weekly divider. And we have a new market structure that has been formed and confirmed, which is the high of that week over here. Okay, so now let's go back to the 15 minutes chart. And in here, um, like I said, we are currently on a daily bullish bias. And if we are going to break a daily low, then the daily bias is going to shift bearish. Okay, now, in here, you already know that my favorite setup is going to be selling above Asian session high and above 12 minute open or buying below Asian session low and below 12 minute open. OK, so keeping that in mind, what we first need to wait is wait for price to reach into one of our point of interest areas. OK, so first, either price is going to go above Asian session high and we're going to look for selling opportunities from there, or it's going to go below Asian session low, and we're going to look for buying opportunities from there. And remember that we only need to take um, setups during the kill zones, okay? Preferably during the kill zones. If a setup is going to form outside the kill zone, which is going to be between these two shaded areas in here, these two gray shaded areas in here, if the setup forms there, uh, ideally, I want it to give me an entry confirmation during the New York kill zone, okay? That's the ideal scenario. Okay, so let's start printing candles and we're going to see what exactly price action is going to do. Okay, so first thing that I'm going to do, I'm going to mark the high of the Asian session because that's a point of interest above which I want, uh, or that's like a price level that I want price to be above uh, it in order for me to consider short opportunities. Okay. Okay, and from here, we're going to, uh, in, in here, once you want to click on uh, next bar, okay, for example, you can see here that I am on the five minute chart. And in here, I have selected the 15 minute chart, okay? If I will start 
clicking on next bar here by having selected the 15 minute chart here, but me myself being on the five minute chart, three candles are going to print. Okay. Because a 15 minute candle is made of five, uh, is made of three five minute candles. Uh, if I want to print M5 candles one by one, I simply need to select standard chart M5 from here. The first thing that we're waiting for is either to go above the high of the Asian session, either below the low of the Asian session. And we also want to mark here the 12 minute open. So this is 12 a.m. Let's just change the color of this. Okay, the London kill zone has just started. I can already see here that price has shown a willingness to reject from this bullish fair value gap. So it's likely that we're going to see price now wanting to go higher for buy side liquidity. Where do we have buy side liquidity? Well, we have it above this high and also above this high and also above the high of the Asian session where you can see here that price spent some time in that consolidation and then it just went down. This is a very easy way in which to identify where liquidity is um, resting, right? So uh, let's see what it's going to do next. Now, I'm not looking to take a long entry in here simply because I'm not below the low of the Asian session. Remember that that's the only case in which I would want to take a long setup, okay? So yeah, there you go. It goes higher. So we can see here low resistance liquidity run, low resistance liquidity run, okay? And perhaps even that's going to be like a low resistance liquidity run. So let's see. Price might get into this. Yeah, not even. It just completely went higher. Okay, so now that we're above the high of the Asian session, now I want to start looking on the one minute chart because now it is um, possible for me to get a short entry. Okay, now in here, if you guys, let's say you draw some objects on one time frame and you want to uh, you want those objects to appear on another time frame you just need to select them so i'm selecting this level here and also I'll select 12 a.m and also the low of the asian session and then you're going to go here to objects and you're going to click on clone update selected and after i've done this on the one minute chart now those um drawing tools have appeared let's go back in here to the one minute chart and now i'll select m1 here and because we are already above our point of interest, we want to start looking for our entry pattern to form. So remember what we need uh, from my previous backtesting sessions. I need a bearish imbalance to the downside. Okay, so basically a bearish fair value gap. Then we need price to go into that fair value gap and give us two bearish consecutive candles. Okay, so that's how we're going to backtest today. So I have in here a bearish fair value gap. If price can tap into that and then give me two consecutive bearish candles from there, then that's going to be good because I can take my short entry. This is another fair value gap. So I'm just updating my chart with the most recent fair value gaps. Ideally, you want price to come into a fair value gap that's going to be located in the premium area of that price leg on which the uh, uh, bearish imbalances forming okay so my price leg started from there and currently it's ending down here so in premium would be above equilibrium okay so let's see so ideally i would want to see price reach into this fair value gap and if it's not going to do that then it is what it is i'll simply not trade okay okay so now let's adjust our fib like this now one misconception that I see a lot of people doing is considering that because this uh, fair value gap in here has been invalidated. Invalidated means what? We closed above its top range. Um, a lot of people are going to think that the market is not going to, uh, you know, that, that it's switching the, uh, let's say, the order flow to the upside. Yes, it might do that. Okay. However, that should not change your bias idea or your trade idea okay so in here this is a bearish fair value gap that it's located in discount okay and if i'm looking to short it means that i need a bullish pullback that it's going to take price back above equilibrium in other words in premium okay where it's considered to be expensive and only after that i'll look for other short opportunities from there okay so in order for price to go up and make that pullback so that i can short at a bigger price obviously it has to 
invalidate some PDA rates that are going to be located here in the discount area of this bearish fib. Okay, so the fact that we're invalidating this at this point does not change my idea of shorting. Okay, now, of course, I might not get an entry at this point. Price could continue to go higher, but am I looking to long this? Am I looking to, to take a long entry? Not based on my rules. Okay, not based on my rules. And in some of my videos, I've received some comments from some of you guys that I'm missing a lot of uh, entries and a lot of pips by not utilizing order flow and market profiling. I've picked a set of rules that I'm, um, you know, following and that so far has proven to be successful. I know that it is likely for price to reject from this bullish for value gap in here. I know that. Okay, I know that a bearish fair value gap that we created there and it has been invalidated and now I see a bullish fair value gap in here and price seems to be rejecting from there. I know that this could be a good opportunity for me to take a long entry. But now, now think about it like this. Is it one of my rules to buy above 12 minute open or to buy above or, uh, you know, within the range of the Asian session high and low? No, that's not one of my rules, okay? So I can see all these things. I can see that price is possibly going to do this or that, but that is not going to make me, uh, you know, stray away from my set of rules, okay? So yes, it's very likely for price at this point to want to start to move higher, but is that the kind of setup that I would take based on my own rules? No, it's not, okay? So then it doesn't make sense for me to take it, okay? So let's see. What I'm waiting for, remember, is for price to reach above equilibrium and possibly into one of these bearish fair value gaps and then give me two consecutive bearish candles from there so that I can take my short entry. Okay. Okay, we've reached there. This fair value gap is already invalidated. Okay, why? Because we closed above its top range and also above the top, above the high top wake of the bearish candle on whose body that fair value gap was. So now it doesn't make sense for me to use that fair value gap. No. Now, if this fair value gap is not going to hold price below it, so if it's not going to act as resistance, then uh, I'm not going to uh, look to take a trade. And there you go. It's not. Okay. So now my FIB doesn't make sense anymore. And it's likely for us that we're going to go higher above this high and maybe continuing higher at a higher um, level of buy side liquidity, which to be honest, I'm seeing above here where you have these clean highs over there. Okay, so let's just put this like that. Now you can see that I'm looking at these price levels. They could be targets for me, but they would not meet my entry criteria. Okay, they would simply not meet my entry criteria. So let's see what price is going to do. Okay, so we're again above the high of the Asian session and above 12 a.m. high, uh, 12 a.m. open, and we have a bearish fair value gap there. Okay, we had another one here. Okay, so at this point, I have an entry confirmation for me to take a short entry. Okay, so I'll open a sell position here and my stop loss. Now, guys, once you open a bearish or bullish position in uh, software FX, now you want to uh, now you want to set your stop loss and take profit. So you're going to go here to trades. You know that I usually don't take, uh, don't set take profit for my trades because I usually manually manage uh, my trades, but I do need to set a stop loss. So you're going to go to trades and in here in market and pending, you're going to click on this little plus sign next to the stop loss. And here you can choose from uh, how many pips from entry here. You need to put the, you know, not pips, but actually points. So if you want to put like three pips, you're going to have to put 30 points, okay? Uh, or you can put it as a fixed price. That means that you would basically just, okay, what, I want to put it a few pips above that high. That would be 1962.09 or 0.100, okay? Or you can simply just take this visual move lines on chart and then in here, this red line, just take it and move it above the high where you want to put your stop loss. And you can see that here, it's also going to show you how many pips you're risking. So in here it's 16 pips almost. It's not 158 pips. It shows in points. Okay. So it's almost 16 pips. 
and I'm risking 160 bucks if I would leave my stuff left like this, okay? So till that high, we have 15 pips. Let's just make it like a 17 pips stop loss, okay? So we're going to click on accept, and then the stop loss has been placed there. And you already know the way in which I, um, uh, you know, manage trades. So if my stop loss is 17 pips, then my TP1 is also going to be 17 pips. So I'm usually looking for a one-to-one -one risk to reward ratio. Okay, so let's see where that's going to be. That's going to be like around there. Okay, so now let's see what price is going to do. Okay, it comes back again into that fair value gap. I like the way it took buy side liquidity above this swing high here. Okay, and then it, it shows again a nice willingness to, to reject to go lower. Okay, you can see that we're already in profit at this point. Back to break even. Okay, but we're just trusting the process. Okay, so when am I going to want to get out of my trades? Well, uh, first, two things can happen, okay? One thing is that it could just continue to move higher and just directly go to my stop loss without me even uh, having anything to say about that, right? So it's just going to move so fast that it's just not going to allow me to do anything, okay? Now, the second uh, moment when I would want to uh, you know, consider closing my position is going to be when the highest fair value gap is going to be invalidated. So, so far, we have not invalidated that one, okay? We can see that we've invalidated this, our entry uh, one. Uh, we also closed above that candle, okay? But we still have one more that is likely to want to keep price below it. So, let's see if that's going to be the case. Okay, we're getting a nice reaction from there. Okay, and now maybe you're going to ask, okay, why wouldn't you take the entry directly from that fair value gap? Usually, if you're going to want to take the entry from that fair value gap, the reaction that you're going to get from there is going to be extremely fast. Okay, so, and it can go fast both ways. Either it's going to invalidate it very fast, either, and, you know, it's going to take you out very, very fast. Either it's going to uh, start to drop very, very fast. And if it does that, it does not give me a chance to enter based on my uh, based on my entry trigger, which is what two bearish consecutive candles. So in here, you can see I have this one and then I had this one. So my entry in this case would have been there. Obviously, my stop loss a lot bigger than it what it is. OK, and you might also say, yeah, Alex, but why don't you just put a pending there? And if price taps that, you're going to have your stop loss just above that candle, just like ICT does it. I know I can do that. I simply just don't feel that trading is supposed to be done based on certain, uh, you know, price levels, but without actually waiting for a specific candlestick formation, something that it's going to tell you that, okay, this is my entry trigger. Okay. So if I would do this, uh, just put a pending here with a stop loss above that candle. Yes, probably my win rate, um, uh, not my win rate, my risk reward ratio would be uh, a lot better. Okay. However, I also have a lot of cases in which uh, my win rate is going to suffer because of that. And why am I saying this? Because I don't know whether this fair value gap is going to keep price. From what I know, this fair value gap was not supposed to be invalidated because this is the fair value gap that is located in premium. Okay. And while it's okay for bearish uh, fair value gaps that are located in discount, the discount of this price move. Okay. While it's okay for those to be invalidated, if I want price to, you know, pull back higher so that I can short at a higher price, it's okay for that. But it's not okay for premium fair value gaps to be invalidated. Okay, so think about it like this. If this fair value gap got invalidated at this point, okay, what makes me think that that one is not going to be invalidated? Make sense? So if this one, if I'm going to just put a pending there, I'm just going to put the pending, hoping that price is going to reject from there. Or at least this is the way in which I see it. And the moment when I've decided to have like an entry trigger, candlestick formation for my entries, everything has completely changed. Okay, so now let's see because we're still missing our TP1. Okay, at this point, TP1 was already hit, 17 pips. Okay, so let's just go here to trades and we're going to close it partial. So I'll just close 90% as usual, and then put stop loss at break even. Okay, so now my position is secured and we can just go ahead and continue to print candles. Now, 
price took me out at break even. Okay, whether it's going to continue to go down or not, I don't care about that because I've already paid myself. And this is another extremely important factor that you guys need to, uh, you know, work on. And it took me a while until I figured this out and I started to, to follow it. Uh, pay yourself. Pay yourself at one to one risk reward ratio. I also hear people saying, yeah, well, when 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 the trade reaches one to one risk reward ratio, I don't want to take any partial. I'll simply just put my stop loss at break even. OK, do that. And then if price is going to continue to move lower after it took you out of break even, you're going to scratch your face because you are just you're going to feel so bad because you could have taken money. OK, but you decided not to. You just moved your stop loss to break even. And now the pain of you not benefiting not even ten dollars from that move okay when you had the chance which was here um that pain is going to be a lot bigger than the pain that you would have had that you would have felt uh if you would have just uh your you know if it would have went to your stop loss why because you see the potential the potential of you making money was there and you just willingly decided not to take advantage of it okay so usually that is going to bring up a pain, a pain that the brain is gonna, yeah, I think I said that well, uh, like brain, right? Uh, a pain in the brain that uh, it's gonna be a lot bigger than if your stop loss is simply gonna get hit. Okay, so we're getting pretty close to the end of the London kill zone. Okay, and price just went higher. It reached that that area that we've marked in here. You can see that buy side liquidity area. Okay, and now what we want to do is we want to print more candles because this could actually represent a good opportunity for us to short. Why? Because we took buy sell liquidity, and if price is going to show a willingness to use that buy sell liquidity to pair it with smart money shorts, then we want to take advantage of that. Okay, now how is that going to look like? Well, we're going to see bearish fair value gaps being formed and being respected. So one of them is here. And again, we are above 12 a.m. open and above Asian session high. And we created a bearish imbalance and we didn't quite tap into it, right? Okay, one bearish candle. We're not getting the second consecutive bearish candle. Okay, and then our fair value gap is invalidated. So you see that we had here two bearish consecutive candles, but this one didn't enter into this fair value gap not even by a fraction of a pip, okay? Because the high of this candle here is 1963.085, and here it's 1963.075, okay? So it was like one pipette lower. So I'm not interested in it anymore. Now I'll have to wait for a new bearish fair value gap to form, if it's going to form, okay? So I have one here. And then we add another one here. And price just invalidates both of them. Yeah, and it's not really giving us anything. So it's just meandering around. So it doesn't make sense for me to use those. Yeah, not a, not a chance. It could continue higher or it's just going to sit here in a consolidation until New York is going to start. Okay, so now if we zoom out, we're going to see that this gray shaded area rectangle has finished. And our um, London kill zone has finished. Now we just want to continue printing candles until it's going to reach pretty close to the beginning of the London kill zone. Uh, sorry, of the New York kill zone. Okay, so let's see. Price is still above 12 a.m. open and above Asian session high. Looks like it wants to go higher. Okay. But again, we're only looking to short. Okay, so I'm seeing some nice reaction here. I like this fair value gap. And we're pretty close to the beginning of the New York kill zone. So it's likely for price now to want to start to, uh, you know, um, be going lower. Okay, a new fair value gap. So the moment we're going to tap into one of these and give us two bearish candles, it's going to be nice. This is no longer valid because we've already closed above it. Okay, we have a new one in here. Let's see. 
another one there. If I would buy now, oh, sorry, if I would short now, um, my stop loss would have to go above there uh, according to my rules and it would be just too big, okay? So now I have two options. I'll either just miss out on the move or just wait for price to retrace higher and take an entry that's going to be a little higher, okay? Okay, so what am I seeing now? I'm seeing that I have this bearish fair value gap. It's in the discount range of this move, this last bearish price leg in here, okay? So it's normal for bearish fair value gaps that are located in discount, um, uh, in the discount half of a bearish price leg. It's normal for those to be invalidated. So my range at this point is going to be from here all the way down to here, okay? And... Okay, now we're already tapping into equilibrium. We are inside the New York kill zone, okay? And what's going to be my bearish imbalance here? Okay, looking nice. I need to, okay, I have two consecutive bearish candles at this point, okay? So now that's going to be my entry trigger. Now, a lot of you are going to think that, oh, what if it's going to reject from this bullish fair value gap? Yes, that can happen, and it means that it's going to take me out, okay? Now, um, my stop loss can go in two directions at this point, either above here, above this swing high, okay? Either above there. To have it above there, I think it would be too big, okay? So I'll just put it above here, and then if it takes me out, I want that this fair value gap is not going to be invalidated and I'll try to take another entry if it's going to take me out on that one. So we're shorting here. We're going to go to trades, set the stop loss and the stop loss is going to go just a few pips above here. So it's almost uh, eight pips. Let's just round it to 10 pips. Okay, kind of like this. Perfect. So now my TP one is also going to be 10 pips. Okay. And that's going to look like this. Okay. Let's see what it's going to do next. Okay, TP1 hit. Now we want to go to trades. I don't, I'm just going to take half of it, okay? Because the amount is pretty small. And I don't want to secure it at break even. I'll just leave it where it is. Okay, so it keeps on going lower. I'll take some of it off again another let's say 80% from the runner and now I want to secure it at break even so now we are at this point looking at let me just remove these uh, drawings at this point we've created a new price leg okay so it means that we could actually take more entries so now I want to update all these um, you know have them uh, here on my chart all these bearish imbalances where these could represent my new entry points, like that, okay? And we're not interested in that one anymore, neither in this one. And we have one more in here. Okay, so now let's see. My new price lag is this one, okay? So if we come above equilibrium and into one of these fair value gaps, then that's gonna be good. So. Obviously, the um, bearish fair value gaps that are located in discount are going to be invalidated, but we want to make sure that the uh, premium ones are not going to be invalidated. So now we've also invalidated these two. Oh, sorry. This one and this one. And now we're being taken out at break even. So now it, it seems as if we're going to have a reaction from this fair value gap. So let's see if it's going to give us two bearish consecutive candles okay that's good so now we're going to short again we're going to go here to trades and in here stop loss is going to go just above there so it's uh 13 pips let's round it to 15 something like this okay and tp1 it's also going to be 15 pips that's roughly kind of like here Okay, TP1 hit. Now let's close a partial. Let's take, I don't know, 70%. And then let me look at it. 
So why don't I put it at break even? Honestly, I don't want to put it at break even. And the reason for that is because I have some bearish fair value gaps above my entry point that price might want to tap into, and I really don't want it to take me out. Okay, so I'll just leave it there because now my position is pretty small. The position that I have that I have opened. Okay, so at this point, I could actually take a new entry. I'm not going to do that because I'm already into a runner. Okay. Okay, it seems to be rejecting from here. Let's see if it's going to do that. Yeah, it's still rejecting from here. So that's still a, a, a fair value gap that acts as resistance. And we've also taken some buy side above this high two consecutive candles. So this again would have been another entry point. So you see if I would have taken the entry here, okay, so two consecutive bearish candles from this bearish fair value gap, my stop loss would have been hit because it would have been here. Now why it would not necessarily make sense for me to take an entry like that? Because this price leg, okay, didn't make a new lower low. Therefore, this is this high, it's like um, internal range liquidity. So it's pretty possible that that is going to be taken out once price starts to move higher in here okay so it just wouldn't make sense for me to take an entry based on a fib that was created on a price like that didn't create a lower low okay okay nice reaction yeah okay takes us out so now it's time to remove the fib and these drawings and let's zoom out this is not valid either again okay and now we've just went into this fair value gap. And if I would put a fib like this, you can definitely see that it's um, in premium. Okay. And let's see if it's going to give us two consecutive bearish candles from here. So that we can take an entry. Okay. So here's the thing. In here, I, or, you know, some of us might think that this fair value gap has been invalidated because we closed above it, but we didn't really quite close above the topic of the candle on whose body that fair value gap is. Can you see here? And also you can see how that candlestick that closes above the fair value gap seems to have like a rejection on it. Okay. Uh, why? Because it has a big top wick to the upside. So, um, oh, okay. This is good. Okay. So if I'll take an entry here, it means my stop loss is going to be above there. 22 pips. Mm, okay, I want to see how this next candle is going to play. Okay, yeah, I'm going to take the sell. Okay, and our stop loss. Going to go just above there. So we're looking at 22 pips. Let's make it 25. Which means that also our TP1 has to be 25 pips. It's going to be kind of like here. Okay. Oh, nice. That's a fantastic reaction. Yeah, TP1 hit. Let's go here. Close partials. So now because the amount is big, I'll just take 90%. And yes, I want to secure at break even, even though I have... Um, this huge fair value gap here it might take me out but i'm counting that it won't won't want to go higher than this one let's see okay yeah it takes me out and let's see what it's going to do next so now i have a new price leg which goes i think you can hear my cat <laughs> she's asking for food okay so now we have a new price leg because it created a new lower low Okay, so any um, premium PDA rate that we're going to find on this price leg. So basically, we're mainly interested in bearish for value gaps as PDA rates. Okay, I don't look for anything else other than that. So I'd have this two consecutive bearish candles. And what I like about it is that it's also invalidating this little bullish fair value gap. I would, though, want it to close below that candle. So let's. Let's see what the next candle is going to do. 
Yeah, not looking very nice. Okay, let's see. Next candle. Yeah. Okay, two consecutive bearish candles. Now I like it. So this is where I'm going to take another short entry. Stop loss is going to go um, about here. Okay, so just above the candle on whose body the, the fair value gap is. And let's just make it like 17 pips, 16, 17 pips, something like that. And obviously TP has to be the same. So it's going to be like this, roughly. Okay, check, takes us out and it gives us two more consecutive bearish candles. So I'm not... Um, I'm not giving this up because now I can see where I um, where my mistake was. Uh, these you see that high formed as a consequence of nothing. What I mean by this, it didn't take buy side liquidity above here, and then it created these two high, uh, equal highs. Um, buy side takes them, and then it gives us another entry. So I'll take one more entry, even though the stop loss of that one was hit and now my stop loss is going to go just here and TP is just going to be the same okay so let's see yeah very close to taking me out okay now TP1 is secured if we go here to close trades you'll see I've lost 160 almost 170 at the last trade okay and now I have 168 left uh, so yeah, let's just take 50%. Okay, and the other is going, the other half is just, we're, we're just going to keep stop loss at break even. Okay, and now it's nice that it continues to respect bearish fair value gaps. Okay, it might go into this one and respect it also, or this one. or not. Now, we have reached below the low of the, uh, no, we've reached below 12 AM open at this point, And we can see that low in here where we have sell side liquidity. So that could actually represent a very good area to take most of our profit off. But I'm thinking it could also want to go below the low of the London kill zone and maybe Asian session low. Let's see. Uh, for now, I want to take some of this profit off. Actually, I'll take most of it. Okay, and I'll secure stop loss at break even. So I took 90% secure stop loss at break even. And now I have a quarter of a standard lot size running. I've actually didn't take half, 90% uh, of that. Oh no, I haven't. Okay, that's bad. Okay, so 003 lots opened. And yeah, it just continues to go lower. Now, I want you guys to see, to notice how um, once price starts to, you know, to be in momentum, um, it's not going to give you too many opportunities to re-enter the trade because it will continue to create bearish fair value gaps, but it's not going to go into them, you know, tap in those areas and then uh, continue to go lower from there. We could see that happening here, but now we're too close to hitting a... Uh, sell side liquidity area. No, actually, we've already touched the sell side liquidity area. So it really would not make sense for us to short now. Okay. If I want to add more short um, positions, I would have to wait for price to make like a deeper pullback higher, maybe come into the premium area of this last price leg that got formed in here. And maybe then look for some more short opportunities. Okay. But other than that, I would not risk in adding a short position that's going to be that low at a at a very low price. Okay, so let's see, not coming to premium and it just continues to go lower. Okay. Oh wow, <laughs> that was a huge day. Okay, so at this point I would probably have all my position closed and that's it. Okay, guys. So I hope that you enjoyed today's video. Um, we didn't get to backtest uh, too much. We only backtested one day, but you know, one day could actually bring a lot of clarity in your 
trading and your trading journey and your trading rules and your trading activity. So if you guys want to try Software FX, it's a great software. Make sure to DM me on Telegram. Let me know if you guys want a copy of this. I can actually issue a license for you with a discount. Contact me on Telegram if you guys want to grab a copy of this. And till next time, take care. Bye.